Hello and welcome back. So I'm very excited to announce the Humanizer 2.1 release for Godot version 4.3. And this update focused on the materials and overlays. So it can now read the mhmat files that come with human from uh, MakeHuman or MPFB2. And you can also set up custom materials and overlays with Godot as resources. So I've added handling for that. And that lets you do some really cool things, like Mad Hatter made this uncolored version of the suit top. So it's got the base material of the elegant suit, and then just the jacket is its own overlay. And then you can change the color on this so make it whatever color you want, which is very cool. So definitely a lot of possibilities with this. I also did some work on the menus, so you can now see the overlays here. And if you change the skin texture so you can see it better. So now you can apply the overlays like the wings or the black eye. And you can also add the normals so you can see the shading whenever you toggle that. And then through the material editor, you can increase the normal strength if you want, <coughs> like so, or decrease it. And these will stack on top of each other like the albedos. So I also added the asset importer. So when you go to import an MH clue, you can set the display name here and a default material as well as set the clothing or body parts slots. And if you have a rigged asset, like the ponytail, you can select the GLB file here, and you can set the attachment bones. So the retargeted skeletons will mostly have the same bone names, but if you want it to work on one of the other skeletons, you can select it from the drop down here, and this will tell it where to connect the rigged asset. And then you can individually import the asset. And you can find all of these nodes in the authoring scene, which is in the scenes folder in the plugin. So now, if you open up the stress test, one of the contributors, Micah, was able to add uh, multi-threading support. So now it can generate in the background thread and that fixed the freeze framing issue. So the, the player would have a second of freezing between each generation of character. And now it is completely smooth and the, the characters are generated in the background. So thank you, Micah, for, for doing that. Or Michael, you can find him in the contributors on the GitHub, and these are all rigged and animated, of course, so it's generating the whole thing. So you can find the latest 2.1 release on github.com slash nitroxnova slash humanizer, and under the releases, you can download the zip and extract it to your add-ons folder. So if I make any updates, you'll be able to find the latest version there. And we have also been working on the wiki. So if you have any questions about creating your assets, check here first. We are trying to get it updated to the latest version. And thank you, Mad Hatter, for helping me get that set up. And uh, he helped make some textures as well. So definitely go check out his GitHub and YouTube channel.
for a lot of really cool Minecraft mods. And we also have a Discord now, so if you click the link, you'll be able to join the Discord. And I post general updates here in the devlog, so you can find out what's, what's happening with the project, as well as uh, we have a forum, so you can give input on the different features. So definitely check that out if you would like to contribute or if you need help getting it set up, um, we'll try to help you there. So my plan now is to add support for modding. And so you just use a PCK file instead, which is basically a zip. And I will put all of the assets, equipment and material assets from the data folder into a resource, a PCK instead. So you can read about that in the Godot documentation. But you can generate those by hand by just selecting the folder. But I think it would be better to have a tool manage that. And rather than adding it all of that into the main Humanizer plugin, I think it makes more sense to put it into a separate tool. So I have the asset importing, animation import, and some other uh, pre-processing tasks that could be in its own plugin. And then Humanizer, once I get rid of all of the data and the pre-processing, um, Humanizer will just be what's needed to run it, it in game. So I think that will make it uh, easier to maintain and um, I would love to hear your feedback on that. So leave me comments here on YouTube or again check out the Humanizer Discord. I'll be there to answer any questions or uh, if you have any ideas, feedback, that would be awesome. So. Thank you so much for watching, and have a great day. And if you would like to support Humanizer and other open source tools, please check out the Rainbow Games Patreon. So I'll put a link to that in the description, and you can find the tiers. So I really appreciate everyone who's donated here. It helps the development a lot, and I hope that you are enjoying the new uh, features in Humanizer. So.